their yachts up to it. So <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, when they were recording on this day, I, I was blessed on the Troubadour album to have three cuts on that record. I'd already had two cuts done, and Glenn Ward, the bass player, was texting me every time they'd cut one of my songs, we cut it! And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, we're paying off this, we're paying off that. And, uh, <laughs> I rest, snap, there you go, check them, they're gone, what's next? And anyway, um, we, we were waiting on, on Troubadour to get cut, and we were like, oh, Lord, please let him cut it, please let him cut it. Well, um, they were sitting outside this building, they were taking a break, the band was, and it's a tiny little building. Glenn says they're all like, jammed in there. So they all want to come out and take a break outside in the sunshine to get some air and whatever when it, between songs. And there were two little straight back chairs sitting against the building. And George and his producer, Tony Brown, were sitting out there. And they had on shorts and T-shirts and ball caps and flip-flops. It didn't look like George Strait. There's no cowboy hat. And when he doesn't have that hat on, you'd be real surprised. It doesn't look like him at all. You just, you're just not expecting it. And so they're sitting out there. And Glenn said... I saw these people coming. He said, I saw them coming from down the street. He said, I was like, oh no. And the whole band saw them. And they're making a beeline straight for George. And George and Tony are sitting in those two chairs and they're reading the charts that for the next song, which is Troubadour. And Glenn's looking over their shoulders like, oh Lord, please let me get that right. You know, and they're like, don't let anything happen because he knew how much I was depending on it. And, and so um, he said, I'm thinking, please, not now, not these tourists, but here they come. And he said, let's see, they were, it was, he said they were like right out of a cartoon. He said they had on like plaid Bermuda shorts all the way to their knees. And, you know, he had on like, I got, you know, laying Key West t-shirt, you know. And it's all that, you know. And she, he said, and, uh, listen, they both had huge Nikon cameras hanging off their necks, you know. The Key West hats, the whole deal, you know. And he said, with the little umbrella stuck in them. And he said, they come straight. This woman makes a beeline for George, and they're leaning back on like two, you know, you know, you prop a straight back chair back and beat up, and, and George just kind of sits forward, and, and Tony's looking at him, looking, nobody's moving, nobody's saying nothing, you know, she goes, excuse me, can you help me with something? And George goes, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know, what is it you need help with? And she said, well, me and my husband have a bet about what's going on in that dumpy building right there. And he goes, oh yeah, what's the bet? And she said, well, somebody told us that George Strait is in that building recording. And I told him, there's no way George Strait would be in that dumb e building. He's got more sense than that. And he told me he knew for a fact George Strait was in that building. And I want to know, I bet him $250 that George Strait wasn't in that building. Is George Strait in that building? And all the band looks at each other and George looks at Tony and George goes, ma'am. You know what? You won the bet because George Strait is not in that bill. <laughs> she goes, man, you owe me two hundred fifty dollars. And they just turn around and walk off, and the whole band's like, "That's a true story." This <laughs> <laughs> song got cut, so you can't make that stuff up. <laughs> God bless y'all, and God bless Cody, and God bless George Strait. And all my buddies, y'all.
Still 